come to our third question about induction motors. And in this question, we'll be using the equivalent circuit uh, of the induction motor to find different parameters related to the performance of that specific machine. So this is a 208 volt, four pole, 60 hertz, Y connected one rotor induction motor is rated at 30 horsepower. Now we are given here the equivalent circuit, R1 and X1, which is the impedance of the stator, R2 and X2, which is the impedance of the rotor, XM, which is the reactance for the magnetization branch. We are given the mechanical and the core losses. And we specify a certain slip because as we know, the slip will depends on the mechanical speed or the rotor speed of the road of the of the induction machine so it's variable it's not it's not constant okay so we want to find different things so now once you see a question like this then you have to select the right model of the induction machine and that is the right model and let's just have a look here we have here r1 and gx1 which represent the stator GX2 and R2 over S, which represent the rotor, and then we have GXM, which represent the magnetization branch. The V phase is basically the phase voltage because we are using here a single phase model, which is equal to the 208, the voltage that we have here divided by root 3, which is equal to 120 angle of zero. Now we want to find the line current. Now, the line current, because this is a Y-connected motor, is exactly the same as the phase current, which is I1. So we're going to find I1. And knowing the voltage here, knowing the whole impedance, then I1 simply will be very straightforward. I1 is equal to the 120 volt divided by Z total, the total impedance of the induction machine. And we look here carefully, the rotor branch is in parallel with the magnetization branch, and everything is in series with the, with the stator, okay? So this is will equal to 120 angle of zero divided by R1 and JX1, which is 0.1 plus J.21, and this is in series with the J10 in parallel with J.21 plus R2 over S, R2 is 0 0.05 and R S is 0 0.05. So R2 over S, basically R2 over S is equal to 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.05 which will give me a total uh, resistance of 1.4 ohm. So this is plus 1.4. So we need to find the total impedance of this. So this is will equal to 120 angle of zero divided by 0 0.1 plus J.21. Again, this is the impedance of my stator. Now the rest will be equal to 1.318 plus J.386. And if you do the calculations, you will find the current is equal to total of 78 amp, an angle of minus 22.8. And this is my I1, which is basically my I, I L. So this is part, part A. Now let's go to the part B. We want to find the stator cover losses. So I, this is my stator. This is my stator. So I want to find that in part B, P stator cover loss, which is equal to three, because we have three phases, I1 square, which I just calculated times R1, which is given to me. So this is very straightforward. So this is three times I1 square, which is 78 square times my R1, which is equal to 0.1. And this gives me total losses of 1,825 watts. So this is my, my losses.
part C, find the PAG. Now, what is PAG? I mentioned that in the previous question. PAG is the power that's transferred from the stator to the rotor. And this is equal to 3 times I2 squared times R2 over, over S. So this is your PAG. Okay, now to find this, we need to find I2. I only know I1. I1, and it comes at this node, it will split between I2 and IM. So we need to find I2. So my I2, we use current division, is equal to my I1, which is the 78 angle of minus 22.8 times the J10, which is the reactance of the magnetization branch, divide by the summation of everything, which is the J10 plus also the 1.4 plus J.21. So this will give me J10 divided by 1.4 plus J10.21. To one. And when you do the calculation, you'll find the current I2 is equal to 75.65 angle of minus 15 amps. So now I am ready to find the PAG, which is equal to 3 times 75.65 square times the R2 over over S, which is the 1.4, we just calculated that, and you will find that this is equal to 24.0 kilowatt. Okay, perfect. Now, what we want to find also, we want to find that in part D, the P converted, P convert. Now, the P convert is basically your PAG minus the cover loss. There are a couple of ways to do it, find that. One of them is to say one minus S, times PAG. So this is one way to calculate it. So 1 minus 0 0.05 times the PAG, which is the 24 kilowatt. And this will give me a total power of 22.8 kilowatt. So this is the converted power from so far from the input PAG. Then we have the P, P convert. In part E, we want to find the induced torque. Now, what is the induced torque? One of the formulas is P convert divided by omega m. So we know P convert, but we don't know omega m. To find omega m, we have to find nm. And to find nm, we have to find first our ns, the synchronous speed. And ns is equal to 120 f divided by number of poles which is 120 times 6, 0, 60, divided by the number of poles, which is 4. And this will give me 1,800 RPM. So this is my synchronous speed. So from this, I want to find my Nm, which is equal to 1 minus S times the 1,800. And this is equal to the mechanical speed or the rotor speed, which is 1710 RPM. Now, once I know Nm, I can find now the torque that is induced, which is equal to the B convert, which you would just calculate that, which is equal to 22.8 kilowatts, so 10 to power 3, divided by Nm, omega M, which is 1710 to pi over 60, and this will give me a total torque equal to 127.4 Newton meter. Then in part F, we want to find the output torque. So my output torque or load torque, both of them the same thing, the load torque or the output torque. So the load torque the load torque is the torque that we applied at the load, which is the output uh, torque. So it comes from the P out divided by the same omega. So this is equal to the output power. We don't know yet the output power. We know P convert. So I need to find P out. So what is the output power? The output power basically is the P convert minus the losses. 
the mechanical losses, which is here will be the, we have here the mechanical loss, we have 500 and we have also the core loss. So we will subtract from this the 500 minus 400 and this will give me a total output power of 21.9 kilowatts. So this is the output power. This is what is make it to the shaft of the rotor. So from this we'll have 21.9 times 10 to power 3 divided by the same omega m which is 1710 times 2 pi over 60 and this will give me a total torque equal to 122.3 newton newton meter okay then we want to find the overall efficiency what is the efficiency of the motor efficiency is equal to p out which we just calculate that divided by pn which we did not calculate so the p out that we just have is that 21.9 kilowatt 21.9 times 10 to power 3. Pn, we can have the single phase model and multiply by 3. So the input power of the single phase times 3, so it's 3, times the V phase, which is the 120, times I1, which is 78. We just calculated that, the 78 amps, times cosine theta V, which is 0, minus the theta of the current which is the minus 22.8 so this is your pn now when you do that we'll find and this is of course times 100 you find that the overall efficiency of my motor it is 84.6 percent finally what is the motor speed in rpm and in radian per second we found in M already, which is 1710 RPM. If you want to find omega M, we know how to do that. 1710 times 2 pi over 60. And this will give me around 179 radian per, per second.